A badge of honor. Police officers and first responders wear badges to let their communities know they are here to protect and serve. But that's not how it feels today. And the stress of the job is taking its toll, taking lives through suicide and post-traumatic stress injury. A Badge of Honor podcast features the cast of the same name, Sam Horwitz and John Salerno. Sam, John, and the team offer the first responders workshops through their critical incident stress management teams and mental health liaisons to offer state-certified t Cole credit programs that save lives. It's time to smash through the stigma. It's time to heal from your injury, and it's time to back our blue. Welcome to a Badge of Honor podcast. Here are your hosts, Sam Horowitz and John Salerno. Hey, welcome. <laughs> hey there, Hey, welcome to a Badge of Honor podcast powered by the OBBM Network. You are live with John and Sam, and we are going to heal our heroes today once again, like we do every Monday. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and supporting such a uh, amazing, amazing cause and workshops to really help our first responders who are battling or um, the family members that uh, have questions that need to be answered. So uh, welcome, Sam. How are you? Ah, doing great. Sorry about that little uh, delay there. You know what? It's, okay. it's springtime in Texas, which means hay fever. And <laughs> so, well, this is why I'm taking allergy men. Uh, so apologies to everybody out there that was like, wait a second. It said, here's John and Sam. And then we weren't there. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, there is so much, uh, so much good stuff going on, on, um, you know, I, it, you and I are on any given day, the stuff just doesn't stop out there. Um, and the one thing that we are seeing is, you know, the suicide rate keeps going up. Um, but the Chicago talk again. about we, the what Chicago again. Yeah, it's, it's going, it's, it continues to go up. Where the focus and all, all the articles see on departments, but like what we're talking about today is the important component: is how are we how are we talking to our first responders while they're uh, starting the job, while they're in the job, some after they retired from the job? How are we connecting with our first responders? Uh, you know, I I will say it's a little bit different. You know, most people are like the guy's the first responder and you know, the, the, the woman is home with the kids or whatever. And in my case, hey, it was can't different. Say that no more. You can't say that no more. Can't say what? <laughs> the, the guy is the first responder and the woman is, you know, home baking bread. Lighting. Can't say that in this, this well, time. Well, but that's how, if you listen, if you listen to podcasts, if you, if you like we have, even it, We've been around, we've seen, it. Let, let's say, you know, I play in the guy's fishbowl, <laughs> okay? So it's a little, little bit different. It makes communication um, different. And our guest tonight, this is a, You're coming grab a your father if they're home with you right now, grab your kiddos if they're home with you. Um, and come around our like little campfire here because you are going to learn a lot. And um, let's just bring Cindy on. We met. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Cindy. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Hey. We uh, we met not too long ago at Backing the Blue Denton. Um, you knocked our socks off. You knocked it out of the park with your presentation. And John and I were like, uh, yeah, podcast time. Uh, so we appreciate you you being here. We know you have a hugely crazy busy schedule. So thank you for making time for the podcast and wanting to connect with the first responders and, and the family members that tune in each week right here. Um, can you just tell everybody watching and listening uh, about you and how you decided to start Code for Couples? Okay. Uh, so I am a licensed professional counselor, so a mental health professional in Texas, um, been one for several years, 20 plus years. And I 
what, well, I'm still married. I'm married to a now retired law enforcement officer or not divorced. Um, so I'm married to a law enforcement officer. Um, in my practice, I work with couples. I work with individuals. I work with trauma. And so seeing that I was working with all kinds of people in my office, starting to see some first responders as well. And so this is around 2012, 2013, maybe a little bit after. And I started realizing that my relationship was different. Like everybody had always told me as a first responder or as a law enforcement spouse that my relationship was going to be different. And I really like part of it as I knew, right? The shift work and how they come home and they're tired and what they see and what they do. And um, it, it was just different, but nobody really explained to me why it was different. And I started to see as I'm working with all these other couples in my therapy room that why can't I make, why isn't this the same in my relationship? I have a lot of foundation, uh, highly trained in working with couples, a lot of uh, foundation as far as my training as a Gottman therapist, primarily uh, with John and Julie Gottman. And I was just hitting a wall in my own relationship. What I started to recognize is 12 or 13 years into my relationship that I had shut down. And so here I am working with these couples and telling them what they need to be doing and saying, you know, you need to open up, you need to be vulnerable, you need to turn towards, you need to handle this resentment that you have. And I realized like it was pot, meat, kettle, uh, that I... <laughs> I had a, I don't know where y'all are in swearing, so I'm going to keep it low. You're good. Um, okay. Like I had a shit ton of resentment because I always felt like the department came first and all the mentors, as far as spouses were just like, yep, that's just the way it is. You know, you're just going to have to deal with it. And this is just what happens to them. And, and you, they just, they just become cynical and you're just going to have to learn to live with it. And I'm not a girl that accepts that well. Um, and I was kind of like, no, that's not okay for me to just adapt all the time. And so I was getting mad. I was getting really resentful. I shut down. If you talk to my husband he'll say like, I didn't know anything was wrong. You were quiet, but like, we were still talking. We were still having sex. We weren't fighting. So I thought everything was fine. Um, but I wasn't sharing with him because silently I was just harboring a lot of ill feelings. And that's when I started to kind of figure out, okay, maybe I need to take my own advice because I always tell people, you know, you've got to meet your, your spouse where they're at. You've got to see where they are. You've got to see from their eyes and see their perspective. And so I kept thinking, maybe there's something here I don't know and started kind of looking into research because I'm a dork. And so I started doing that first and there wasn't a whole lot so I in, in like psychological journals. So I started looking at law enforcement journals. And as I started looking at articles, um, I saw this book that kept coming up called the, uh, was it? It's Gil Martin's book. I can't, right now I can't think of it, right? So, um, but we all know what, what, what I'm talking about, right? So I saw Gil Martin's book and I thought, huh, maybe, maybe this is something right. I should read. And, and as I went along, there were also other things. I went to a counseling conference and uh, the, the military guy was talking about post-traumatic stress and then started talking about an OODA loop. And I'm like, this sounds like what my husband does that I find really super annoying. And so I texted him and he's like, yeah, I know what an OODA loop is. Where are you? And so... Um, there were just things that along the way I started to learn. Um, my husband was reading Lieutenant Colonel Great Dave Grossman's book on combat or on killing one of the two. He read them both. But on one of the books, he we're laying in bed and he turns to me and he says, am I a sociopath? <laughs> and I'm like, what? No, you're not. A, what? No. And so I was talking to him about that. And he, he says, do you know what the DSM is? I'm like, yeah, that's my diagnostic manual. Like I have it here on my shelf over here, right? And, and I'm like, yeah, that's my diagnostic manual. Like, what are you reading? And so that's when I started really understanding, like there's a big intersection of the psychological aspect or the impact that we were not, we as a couple were not aware of. 
And if we're not, if I'm not aware of it and I'm in this field, how many other people are not aware of it? And there were times where I thought the only reason why we are making it through this is because I have this set of skills that other people don't have because I'm a counselor and I work with couples and I work with trauma. So I have some skill set. And I think if we would not have had all of that, I don't know. I, I don't know what it would look like now. I don't know what our relationship would be now. But that was where I realized, like, as we started to make through it, get through it, like 2016, um, I decided I, I can't just sit on this. I have to share this with other people. And so that's a long story of how Code 4 got started. But um, yeah, so that's what I said, like, I have to share this information in some way. And that's when I started kind of, uh, I think I started the podcast in 2017 and started educating law enforcement couples. And it also applies to first responder couples. Everybody tells me like, it's first responder. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. But that was my focus. Um, so educating couples on what happens, what's the impact of not just shift work, but what is the psychological impact? And then how does it spill over and play out in a relationship? And what is a couple can you do? And that is a perfect, yeah, that is a perfect segue, Cindy. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta stop you real quick because we're gonna take our first break and then we're gonna talk about those concepts because see, I got this right here and uh, everybody's gotta grab the book. We're gonna talk about it when we come right back. Okay. Move freely, America, without medical restrictions or penalty. Without medical freedom legislation in place, our rights and freedoms are one vote away from being dissolved. Move freely, America, with one voice, without fear of retribution, achieving a common goal, medical freedom. We the people make our voices heard by connecting with state legislators and engaging a constitutionally compliant medical bill of rights for all citizens. Individually, change is improbable, but as an aggregate, attainable. It's time to act with one voice, my voice. And my voice. And my voice. And my voice. To protect our freedom, creating one voice that cannot be ignored. This requires your voice, too. Move Freely America. Go to movefreelyamerica.org to find a chapter near you. Plug in, donate, and help our legislators defend our God-given rights under the Constitution. Move Freely America. My voice. And my voice. And together with your voice, we're one voice that cannot be ignored. Donate today. Movefreelyamerica.org. Hey, welcome back to a Badge of Honor podcast with John and Sam and our wonderful guest, Cindy Doyle, um, who has been talking to us about the hard conversations in relationships and what um, each first responder, you know, we're, you're not alone, goes through the trials and tribulations of their marriages and their, their relationships with a first responder, either being both or a single, how uh, you can... Um, harbor some resentment either to that person or the job itself. And that's what I wanted to ask you, Cindy. Did you have resentment towards your husband or the job? Which one? Oh, both. 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 Because my belief was that he was choosing the job over him, over me and over us. Because in my mind, I... <laughs> my belief, I was a little naive, but, but my belief was just tell them, no, you need boundaries. And I would tell him those things. And he's like, you're not getting it. I can't just tell them no. And, and so part of it was I held resentment and some contempt for him. And then I would say also the job because I, it was, it seemed like it came first and that their demands came first. It's almost like in a way having, having a, 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 I'm going to say it this way, like a mistress or a mother-in-law in the middle of your relationship. No, uh, you, I love my mother-in-law. Right. She's amazing. Um, but that's really, but that's really what it is. It's like somebody else gets to dictate the terms of your relationship and where your time is going and where your attention is going. And, and do I have to be on call? You know, do I get conditioned by the phone all the time? And so, oh, hold on. It's just work. Let me do this really quickly. And so it kind of develops from there. You know, Sam, you, you know it as, I mean, you probably know it more than most because being in the Secret Service, you are actually married to your job. You have so many restrictions as a, as a person. And, and we see that more and more.
but in the secret service, you see that a lot probably is that you are married to the job and um, we don't know how to disconnect from that. And, uh, and a lot of people do not understand it. Correct, Sam? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it was 24, seven, 365. That, that's what it is. So you, you may be working a protective detail or you may be in the office, but you're never off. So it, it, it is full time all the time. And I totally get that the phone thing. I, I remember when I transitioned uh, to local law enforcement and I had, uh, had a different communication device and my husband and I were in the bedroom and I had it on my nightstand and it went off a couple of times. He's like, if you don't throw that it, or turn that off, I'm going to throw it out the window. And I was like, how do I tell that to my, my boss? <laughs> like, like, um, can you not text me? And, and yeah, it doesn't work that way. And that's the, Cindy, you, you, you laid the foundation, um, I'm going to put this up again. This is a must read for first responder couples. Okay. This is going to go on our reading list, which will be on, uh, on our website. Um, you have taken us through, uh, and, and parts of the book as I was reading, I was like, yep, yep. And laughing with you. And the, the whole, the whole hysterical parts of, of what you said, you know, being a little bit naive and it really comes down to the fact that, there wasn't the communication. Yeah, you guys were just going through the motions. And so for all the first responders out, out there that are listening, for all the couples and, and, you know, this is going up on replay tomorrow and forever, is like you, you need to stop right now and say, are, are we going through this? Because when you when you want to jump forward in the book, cause, cause this goes in, this has a great order. When you're, when you're, everything spills over from the job to the home. Okay. What, what we preach at a badge of honor is you are not the job. We have to sever that identity tie. Okay. You are you doing a job. It's a big hurdle to get over, but when you can remember that you're yourself and so that when you get off shift and you're walking into your house, that spillover doesn't come in. But with that, you got to be aware of spillover. So let's talk about spillover so that people can really understand. Yeah, sure. And, and one thing that I'm, I'm, I tell my couples and when I'm speaking, I'm very clear, like this is a couples based issue. This is not a, we're not blaming first responders. Wives aren't totally, or spouses aren't totally responsible. Like it's a couples based issue. And we are both conditioned. We are both impacted by what's going on as a part of this career and as a part of this lifestyle. So we have to be aware of that. So some of the aspects that, we that I talk about in the book and that I was not aware of are things like hypervigilance. And I think we talk more about hypervigilance, but there are aspects of hypervigilance that people don't understand. First of all, many spouses don't understand that it takes 18 to 24 hours to recover from, from hypervigilance. So going up, uh, I just had a couple in here and we were talking and he's like, yeah, I, he's a firefighter. And he's like, yeah, I came home and I was, exhausted and at the same time I'm like Ugh! like all edgy because he had to, he's a driver and so he had to stay awake you know the whole but he was so tired right so that hyper vigilance coming in the door where it's it's starting to come down and what we're able to get as spouses and what first responders are able to give many times is lacking initially. We want to connect right off. We want, we haven't seen you for a while and you haven't seen us. And so we want to be like, oh my gosh, let us tell you all the things. But in actuality, the brain is shutting down. The prefrontal cortex, the frontal lobe is like, oh, I'm tired. And so what happens is that I can't process information clearly. I cannot make clear decisions. I am not engaging. And when couples do not understand that, then there is a story 
that goes along with that. And the story is you don't care. You're not listening to me. Um, you're not really hearing me. And in actuality, there's a biological process of that. Um, there's more about the spillover that has to do with hypervigilance, which can be like the, I call it the sparkly object syndrome, where it's like, if I'm looking for, my brain is looking for that hit, if you will. And it wants to get some excitement. And so that might be spending money or doing risky things, or, um, you know, this is where sometimes uh, alcoholism or bad habits and patterns can come into play. Uh, the brain is dumb. And so it's things like home, boring, home, bad, relationship, bad. And many times that's not what's going on. It's just the downside of hypervigilance. Um, the, there are so many different aspects I could go on and I want to be really careful about what y'all want to talk about. Um, the, go ahead. I want to touch on one thing that you just yeah. said. Uh, we want to promote. Yeah. To get out of, to get out of that hypervigilance state, you're talking, what you say, 12 to 24 hours, right? Mm -hmm. So when a when a when a first responder is doing a twelve hour shift, right, and then he comes home, right now he's got another twelve or twenty four hours to decompress from the first shift, right? He's going back, right? Okay, so where where is the where it mm -hmm. what do you, like? I don't I don't know if there's a healing process on this or if there's a decompression uh, equation for this where we could say, all right, after your twelve after you do your twelve hour shift, you get two days off then do another 12 hours or, but these guys are go running back to back to back. And now it's on now times where there's, they are so understaffed in law enforcement that guys can't even take days off. Can't take, right. vacation, can't do anything. Right. So there is no, there is no decompression time. Right. Which, which then causes problems with mental health. I think, I think I know where, yeah, I think I know where John's going as the perfect answer because, because I read it. We'll be right back with, with author Doyle. Stay tuned, everybody. Interested in starting a podcast or TV show? Worried about what you'll say and how to keep it engaging? Think you'd like to be a guest on podcast, radio, or TV shows? Hi, I'm Susan Hamilton, owner and founder of OBBM Network, and I would like to invite you to an OBBM media training to get the tools you need for a relaxed and polished performance you'll be proud to share. Our specialized training techniques include role play, voice training, and everything you need to deliver a confident, clear, and engaging interaction. Go to offbeatbusiness.com. Go to the calendar and register for a training that's convenient for you. Dates available now, 214-714-0495. Hey, welcome back to a Badge of Honor podcast with John and Sam and the wonderful Cindy Doyle. Uh, we're talking about relationships. We're talking about how first responders decompress and what what the, the problems occur, the problems that occur when they shouldn't really occur. It's because we don't see eye to eye with each other. We we hold resentment. We we perceive things that really aren't there. We perceive our spouse as as the enemy instead of the confident. Um, and that happens with all first responders because of our hypervigilant states. So I want to welcome back Cindy. Thank you so much. Uh, and continue with the decompression and everything else. So your question was, you know, when when we have first responders that are working multiple hours of shifts, I know some of my fire guys or fire, fire people are working 48 on, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have those longer shifts or we have, you were mentioning officers that are not able to take off. I remember there was periods of time where my husband's department was down and he was like the FTO. And so he was the one who like, like for 18 months, two years, we really did not see each other hardly at all. Um, it compounds the hypervigilance, the, the, you know, it's like when you, <laughs> we have a great time frame here because we just went through the daylight savings thing. Right. And right. so we think it's just an hour, but we know how long it takes for our, for our bodies to adjust to that hour. So think about 
being hypervigilant in your body is just exhausted. It takes 18 to 24 hours to recover. And then before you can even recover, you're going back to work. You're going back to work. And many times in our cycle, even when we're just on our regular cycle, if my, uh, my husband would do like three, three on, two off, three off, two on kind of a schedule. And on the days, like the day that he was finally coming off of the hypervigilant cycle and finally getting relaxed, basically we had a good six hours before he had to go to bed and, and go back to it. When he had the three days off, it was a little bit better. Like we maybe got a whole day where he was himself. And so, but when it just compounds like that, uh, we were talking about like it leads to mental health issues, right? Because our brains can't recover, we get tired. Our there's actually a, a system that happens in our brain that only happens when we're sleeping called the glymphatic system, and it's like a little tiny street street sweeper that goes through your brain and cleans things up. And when your body cannot relax to get to that sleep state then your brain is not going to be able to cleanse itself. It, and that leads you open to more trauma. It also leads you to being more edgy. Your family then is feeling disconnected. Your spouse is, the spouse is feeling disconnected. Um, and then let's add on top of that, if you have two, two like married couples that are in first responder world, right? Whether that's a nurse or EMS yeah. or fire or police, like that happens, right? And so then you're totally off sync and you're, the hypervigilance is causing a problem. Um, so there's various, and one of, the, one of the things I tend to say is, or one of my mottos, messages, that's a good word, messages. One of my messages is that what keeps you safe on the job can negatively impact you at home. So I don't wanna take away the OODA loop, the hypervigilance. I don't wanna take away uh, the sheepdogness, if you will, or however you wanna look at that. I don't wanna take those away because that keeps you coming home, right? That keeps you coming back to your family. It's that we have to understand the long-term impact on those behaviors, on those systems, because you're wired in a certain way, just like we get, I get wired being at my office. I'm like, oh, let me analyze you, right? So I start to think about why people do things sometimes as opposed to just listening to people. And so that can get in the way, but it's because I do what I do every day. And it's the same thing for our first responders, um, the way they see the world, right? So negative, I mean, all, right. all cynical, right? Like, oh, negative. I was like, negative. I said, my cool. Like they're just all a bunch of morons, right? So it, it's yeah. that same way. But if if we don't understand how it comes over at home, then our spouses are going to be like, oh, you're just so negative all the time. Why, why are you have to act like this? Why do you have to react? It's just milk that spilled, right? Uh, Johnny's, Johnny's being picked mm -hmm. on at school. Well, let's go kick his ass. Right. You know, let's go kick that kid's ass. And, and that's the thing where it's like, no, that doesn't help. But that's that's the <laughs> biological reaction, right? Because we, our first responders react. They they jump into action. And that's what keeps them safe. So right. I don't know if that helps some. Yeah. And that is a big thing. But when I was reading the book is like, you know, I, I, when I got went through therapy, I had to learn how to take a breath and respond because that react mm -hmm. and the wanting to jump in and the wanting to fix it's a very hard thing to, uh, to get under control. Um, you know, and this is where communication comes in because when, when a spouse knows th through education or therapy, whatever it looks like, wherever you're getting your information from, again, hold the line, great information. Uh, uh, there, there's a way to then build in understanding so that, you know, your first responder is like, he's, he's, an, he or she is, you know, well, if you're a she, it's a bitch, but otherwise you're an asshole. Right. Why is he an asshole right. all the time? We'll talk about this in the workshop, okay? If you understand 12 to 24 hours before your first responder can actually engage in a meaningful conversation rather than you're talking and it's just this or, hey, are you listening? Uh-huh. 
right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where it's the half listening, you're getting every other word. It's, it's work on both sides. You cannot expect your first responder to walk mm -hmm. in and have that meaningful conversation and connection. There's got to be that downtime. Um, and and that's where I think, you know, when John and I were, were listening to you present, that's where a lot of, of the missing links are because you can listen to podcasts and your podcast is fantastic. Uh, by the way, where, where can, where can, do you have a day and a time? Where can people find your, your po podcast called, called Code for Couples? Yeah, so Code for Couples is available on, on most podcast plat platforms, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple, uh, you know, iTunes, just about any place that you listen to SoundCloud. Okay. Um, so it's all available there. I usually release on Fridays. Okay. Well, let me ask you. Okay, Sam, so you if you're a podcast listener, go. Th you can learn. Right. So, so it is yeah. all about educating. And I want I want to I want to switch over to because you, you make a great distinction. It is about communication, but more we're looking for connection and how to effectively connect because that's from emotion. John. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to what you said, you know, and I, I'm not going to use any derogatory terms, but you called the women B's and the, and the guys A's. Right. So bitches and assholes. Right. He's but, an ace. Yeah. Bitches and assholes. He's an yeah. Like, okay. he, he, here's another monkey wrench. Here's another monkey wrench into the conversation. And, and for the first responder to so he doesn't shut down is most women, most women, in a, you know, are fixers. They want to fix things. They they don't see they don't like to see their spouse hurting, upset, you know, in a bad mood. So they try to fix things. And then when the the first responder goes to open up. Right. The the spouse is listening to respond and not listening to hear because they want to, you know, it's just it's just your maternal your maternal instinct to fix it. I can fix this problem. I can fix everything that you go through at work. And that's not what men really need. Men don't need fixers. Men need just to release, but they need you to absorb. They need an absorb. They need a sponge that's just going to absorb it and go. Mm -hmm, I understand. I, and, and feel compassion and empathy and stuff like that on that aspect. You guys are going, no, I'll just tell your boss. But this is where the the clash comes. <laughs> well, it, in what I'll add into that is that it is human nature to want to fix problems because as humans, we don't like to see other humans suffer. Right. And so it's really human nature for both genders to to want to fix, right? So yes, we have, we're coming at it from different approaches and the fact that when I'm fixing your problem, it's because I want something I want, right? If I'm gonna go tell your boss, my motivation is because I want you, not him, right? <laughs> That's a part of it. Many yeah. times first responders fix because that's what they do all day, right? So my husband, would, when he was listening to me, he would sometimes, and, and, and he allows me to tell all our stories. I have to share that. I'm not doing this behind his back. But I would start telling him something and he would do this. Wrap it up. To, yeah, get, to, to, like, get to the point. Get to the yeah, point. I, I, know, right? I know that. I know that. And I was like... Yeah, the person, yeah, my my husband would be like, what the hell? I'm like, what's right. the point? So, but that's yeah. because you're listening, you're listening because you're like, okay, I fix problems all day long. How do you need me to fix your problem? So I think both of us do that. I It's interesting where you went with that, John, because I thought you were going to go someplace else with that, which is that many times as spouses, it's uncomfortable when our first responder falls off their, their horse, if you know what I mean. That sometimes we are so very used to being strong as a couple and stuffing those feelings down because we just got to get through and we got to get, we got to take the next step and we got to do the next right thing. And this is just the lifestyle we live and we sacrifice and we serve and this is what we do and that's our calling. And so when, 
I, I mean, I remember a time when my husband sat on the porch and he felt like he totally failed his chief on something and he started to get emotional. And I remember going inside going, hold on, let me get some water. Probably it wasn't, probably was a bourbon. Um, but let me go inside, right? And I remember, I remember texting my friend going, oh my gosh, pray for us. I think Bobby's getting emotional. And, and like, I was a counselor. But, but those, but that was right. foreign to me because I was used to him being like the tough guy and to see him get emotional and struggle. And as we, I think culture's now changing too, to be able to say like, Hey, how are you really doing? And we have to be prepared to listen to that. Um, and then Sam, I wanted to come yeah, back you know, around to you. Go ahead. Yeah. When you when when I want to when we come back from commercial break, I want to talk exactly about that because that's where the connection comes in, and the things that we can say as uh, first responders, and on the flip side, as supporters, partners, um, spouses. So we will be right back after this break. Hi, welcome to Heroes in Action. I'm Ray Amina, founder and creator of this training system. I originally made it so that everyone can train for free. We have programs for kids, for women, families, and businesses. I'm an author, speaker, and educator on everything that has to do with violence and bullying prevention education. If you'd like more information about who we are and what our programs are, please go to our website at heroesinaction.us or give me a call if you have any questions at 727-314-2534. We hope to see you here to train. Hey, welcome back to a Badger Rana podcast with John and Sam and Cindy Doyle. Um, we're talking everything from the com those hard conversations to those interactions with your spouse and why they are so tough at times and why we all get into that shutdown mode. We don't speak. We close up, which is is what we all do. And it's not the healthiest way to uh, handle any situation. And the conversations that we can have um, are easy, but they're hard for us to break through to take that first step. But once we get there, we'll start rolling. You'll see that your relationships start to build, right? For sure. Um, so part of what we're talking about is the idea of having this uh, communication is what we're going to say. So I always say I wanted to point out just the five. I have five C's that I kind of talk a lot about, which is uh, communication like you. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to you have to know. It's cultural competency. Sorry, I said the wrong C. But cultural cultural competency, like we have to understand what's really going on behind the scenes and we have to understand each other's world. So connection, which is about that communication, which many times what we're not doing is we're not kind of seeing through each other's lenses. We're seeing through ours and what we want and need. And that's the driver. Compassion. So having empathy and, and it's not like, Oh, I feel so sorry for you. But just being able to say things like, that sounds really hard. Or, God, that would piss me off. Or, ah, oh, that, that would be scary. And just trying to connect on a feeling. And it's so important to just take a stab in the dark at a feeling. I have this wonderful, like, I can't point because I'm backwards. My <laughs> feeling pillow here. Like, I mean, you can download Very charts to to potentially build a feelings vocabulary but you could just start things like with scary mad sad glad excited just go with those five in just in guessing your partner's feeling in addition to hearing their content makes all the difference in the world so you know, they said one two three and it sounded like they felt ABC or just a right? Because even if you get that wrong, your partner is going to feel like, oh my God, you see me. 
And that is the connection that we're looking for, is that compassion to feel seen, to feel heard. And that's when we can kind of take off that emotional armor that we both wear um, and let it go a little bit. Because I know now that I can take off that emotional armor and feel safe with you. But it takes courage, which is my fourth C. It takes courage to take that armor off, to be real, to be honest, to talk about how we're feeling. And it takes courage to walk into, to kind of lean into somebody's el somebody else's pain. Because just like we were talking about, John, like it's easy to fix it. Like we want to fix, let's get you fixed so you feel better as opposed to like, ugh, this is a really painful place. And many times what we don't do in our culture is we don't sit in pain. We don't sit in grief. And I don't mean like we have to roll around in it, but just acknowledge it acknowledge and sit in that space just for a minute before you say to somebody, how can I support you? What can I do in support today? And that's where you start to move into countering the impact. So how do we do things differently? How do we connect differently? What do I need to understand? How do we set up systems and rituals that will help us to feel connected when you are in a good space and I'm in a good space. How can we understand each other a little bit better? How can I work on understanding that the OODA loop is not about you checking out the waitress and about you making sure that all the doors are in a safe place, right? So there's all these different aspects of how that we can improve communication, but it's really about the connection. It's feeling, it's really about feeling seen and heard and being each other's safe place. And many times we say things like, I got your back or I got your six. But really what that means is like in that moment, how can I have all points of view? Like it's the 360, right? I right. think I read the other day, it's Ooh. like, I got your 12 or something like that. Or, and really it's, it's having all points of view and understanding where you want to go as a couple, not letting the career drive you, but you deciding where you want to be, because at some point in time, the career will be over. And that's a whole nother story. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's a, that's a whole nother podcast episode. Yeah. Um, whole you before because your husband is, is retired now. So the, the conversation can continue here. So um, I've been showing this, uh, the book called hold the line. Um, which you wrote, and a lot of what we're talking about is, is coming from the book. There is so much more, including uh, links that you have in here where you can download worksheets. Um, because again, it's all about you know coming to a new place in in the first responder relationship because. You're not coming into it when you marry somebody or you're living with somebody already knowing these things. What what I want to what would you say to somebody cuz we got kind of two two pieces. One, you know, you're marrying somebody who is just starting their career. So maybe they're not a cop yet or a first responder yet or maybe they just, you know, went completed the academy, okay? Then you've got the segment We've got a lot of blended families, okay? What, what's your biggest piece of advice for you're marrying a first responder as a second marriage and you were not married to one the first time around? So I think there's a couple different things when you are blending families and you have somebody who is that first responder and somebody that is not, first of all, once again, you have to understand that you have to get culturally competent. You have to understand what's going on. Um, second of all, there has to be a lot of conversation around what it's going to look like as far as blending the family together and the custody and how people are showing up. The argument that I hear a lot with my first responder families is that a lot of people will work one weekend on, one weekend off, one weekend on, one weekend off. And that weekend off is with, it also includes the children from the previous relationship. And many times the spouse winds up upset because, or, or it can also be like, oh, well, the kids are coming this weekend, but I have to work. And so 
talking about what are those mm. responsibilities? What are the expectations? How do we want this to look? What are the values? Many times we're talking about making value-based decisions when you're having a family system or a blended family, because you want to keep in mind the values that you want to set forth. The other aspect, if you're blending a family, is that many times the children in the first responder relationship, if they came into it, they understand or they know what's uh, what's potentially happening. They understand what's going on with their with their uh, parent and the maybe the ups and downs of what's happening. Um, the kids coming into that will not. They don't understand those ups and downs. What is what is this process that has to happen when they come home? Are we walking on eggshells? Do we need to be careful when when mom or dad are coming in the door now? Um, trauma is another aspect to consider with a blended family. So when there's a blended family, are, are kids that were previously coming from the first responder family, are they already experiencing some level of trauma where kids from the other family are not? So a lot of it has to be, there has to be a lot of open communication, a lot of discussion, a lot of discovery, and then keeping in mind what are, what are our values as a couple and how do we want to do that with our kids or to blend our family together? That's a, that's amazing advice. Um, I'm going to, when we come back from our last break here, I want to talk about how people can reach out to you. And, and one of the last sections in the it's super meaningful. We'll be right To the Health Engineer Show, I'm Kurt Buckley, the Health Engineer, right here on the Health Engineer. Hi, I'm Larry Kurt Campbell. This is Hi, my name is Susan Hamilton, and you're watching Off Hi, this is Doreen Milano. Welcome to Big IT Small Business. We're reworking your business. Hi, I'm Kelly Hamilton. Welcome to Big IT Small Business. We're reworking your business. Hi, I'm Kelly Hamilton. Hey, welcome back to a Badge of Honor podcast with John and Sam and Cindy Doyle of Code for Couples. We are talking about strengthening our relationships with our spouses, building a, a future with our children and not being those ones that are going to be, you know, shut down after um, the trauma and every, the job is gone. So we have to realize this early on in the beginning stages of relationship, beginning stages of the of entering the first responder field. And we have to have these conversations from from day one to get us to day that retirement age. So, Absolutely. Cindy, so we're talking uh, with Cindy Doyle, who wrote the book, Hold the Line. Again, grab the copy. Um, and um, so in the back, making your uh, relationship work okay, is where you have all of the action steps. John will tell you, I, you can you can sit and learn and absorb without an action step. It just stays up here and you don't do anything. That's why... We uh, bring people on like Cindy because it's not, it's about getting into action. Just like we ask you when John and I and Jeff and John are doing our workshops, we do action because you got to make it part of muscle memory. You got to make your relationship, the steps you take, make the new connections, everything part of muscle memory. So there's, it's, it becomes less awkward because it's going to be awkward at first, but then the more you do it, it becomes less awkward. Cindy, how do people reach you? What's, what's the best way and, and get a hold of the book? Um, the best way to reach me is to go to code4couples.com and it's the number four. So code4couples.com um, and you could just go to my website. It's um, You can go there and reach out to me, the contact information, or if you need me to come for workshops or speaking. I have a train the trainer program too that I do. Um, podcast by the same name. Um, the book is available on online retailers. So Amazon, Barnes and Noble, for sure. You can access the book there. Um, I also have, you could go to the website. If you look at under the, I think it's the book or hold the line tab, or you can go to hold the line book.com and it will uh, take you to the guide that is downloadable. So it's a, I think it's a 70 or 72 page workbook that I designed to go with the book and to help uh, help you as a couple walk through 
some of the ways that you can get your relationship lined up, what's working, what's not. Um, and it's free right now. At some point in time, I will make it a paid thing, but I have not yet. So grab it. it while she can. said it. it's free right now. It's going to be behind a paywall. So we will be both, some point and then the free workbook. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Hey, you, you, you got to do that. You got to do that. And then you are uh, available on social media as well. People can follow you. Where yep. can they find you on social? Code for couples. I, I tried to make it easy. So yeah. code for couples on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, if you're on LinkedIn, I'm a little bit harder to find. I think it's uh, Cindy Doyle LPC is what I am on LinkedIn. So, um, but I'll yeah, be just, in the I show, I think. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can find me there. Absolutely. absolutely. And I put the, uh, uh, everybody can see um, watching the number four uh, couples.com is, is up on um, the page right now. Cindy, uh, can't thank you enough for spending this time with us, uh, with all the first responders, first responder couples, uh, watching kids, you name it, um, because this is so important as we're trying to smash the stigma. We're getting trying to get first responders to reach out. The best way you can break through and be courageous is start with the people that love you right at home. And Cindy, you gave us amazing tools. And again, folks, pick up the book because she gives you the dialogue of like what to say. It's it's really good. And it's funny. You're funny. The stories are funny. Thank you. Um, and uh, <laughs> no the lie. crumbs, the cleaning of crumbs after shift. Everybody just get that. for, And then you'll know what I'm talking about with the cleaning of the kitchen with the crumbs. Um, yeah, we look forward. We, there's, there's so much more to talk about. We'll, we'd love to have you back on the podcast at a, at a later date to continue, um, this conversation again, just, just thank you so much Absolutely. for everything that you've given us here tonight and what you do for first responder families and couples. You're most Truly. welcome. Thanks for having me. I thank really appreciate so much, it. I appreciate yeah. it. You bet. Great one. We'll see you soon. Take care. Man, Cindy, Cindy Doyle with Code for Couples. All right. Wow. Okay. See, it's that yeah. delay. <laughs> Cindy, Cindy Doyle with Code for Couples. Yeah, Cindy sorry. Cindy. Yeah, I, it, is, uh, it is a weird delay tonight. Weird delay tonight. So um, without delay, hopefully, <laughs> we've got a lot to, uh, to cover here. Here um, again, it, it code the number four couples.com. Just go there, there's tons of stuff. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff going on right now for till the 15th. So you got two days, and it's not even a two full days. This cuts off the 15th at 3 p.m. Uh, we have an initiative that we partner with, hashtag walk the bridge. We've been talking about it all over social. Um, we partnered, well, I actually Grunt Style was like, um, yeah. Uh, so Grunt Style created a t-shirt for the initiative. And again, you have until the 15th at 3 p.m. It's your way to not only be a part of the initiative wherever you are, but to wear something. And it says smashing the stigma so that people can know you're part of this worldwide movement and it is a worldwide movement every month we get together across the world we walk together on on a bridge sometimes there's no bridge but we're walking there. the whole point is the stigma showing people that they're not alone we're supporting our veterans our active duty personnel our law enforcement, our firefighters, all first responders, current and retired. And we're also holding up the families that have lost their loved ones uh, to suicide, remembering their loved ones, how they lived and not in the manner that they died. So the easiest way uh, to be a part of that initiative, show your support is go to walkthebridge.org grab a t-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, hoodies, Texas, we're Texas, hoodies, 
and uh, and yeah, be a part of the movement wherever you are. You can also find out how to create um, uh, if you want to do your own walk in your own community. And so the next walk is uh, uh, this coming Sunday, March 19th at um, uh, 3 p.m. out here in Rockwall um, and 3 p.m. also in Fort Worth. Again, the easiest way, walkthebridge.org to find out what time um, to meet up in your area to do that. We have also got um, a first responder and family workshop coming up. Thank you, Rowlett Fire Department, for bringing us in uh, as part of your family to talk to your first responder, firefighters, and uh, the family members. Jam pack, eight hour day, uh, and we got the first half with the the first order and half of the families coming in. Uh, and again, you're walking out with tactics, tools, and resources that um, you can uh, use at home on top of the one that Cindy just gave you. So if you forgot them, just go watch the replay. It'll be up tomorrow, I promise. Okay. Uh, so if you are a Rowlett uh, firefighter, um, Chief's got you covered. If you are not, reach out to us. Again, at badgeofhonor.com, you can find on the events page, and uh, we'll give you everything you need to know. Uh, that is Saturday, March 25th. And, um, you know, it is, it, springtime is always busy. Okay, we've got always a lot going on, but all of our partners, um, it's time for fundraising. We've got Eagle Oak Retreat in Italy, Texas, running their Warrior Path program currently. You can go uh, there and find out uh, about the amazing healing that Warrior Path uh, through our Boulder Crest Foundation, or through the Boulder Crest Foundation is doing that. Again, it's all on our website, PTSD Non. You can follow the, the tour that is nationwide. We'll be here in Garland, Texas. A badge of honor is bringing it here on Saturday, uh, June 24th, um, and uh, we will be put, posting, you can be a part of that special night, it's only going to be $10, come out, you and me be a part of something really special. We got an on um, round up for first responders, through our website, Kone Boom, and uh, carry the load. We are blessed uh, by Carry the Load to be nonprofit partners with them. You can join our team by going to abadgeofhonor.com, clicking on the Carry the Load logo, and it'll take you right to our team website. You'll learn more about us, our initiatives, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and join our team, walk with us, carry with us, or uh, just direct donate and uh, make a difference. And it all goes to law enforcement, first responders, our active uh, personnel, as well as our uh, veterans. So get involved today. Whew, that was a mouthful, John. Take us home. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, the biggest thing is please share this show because you don't know who it, who it may help, who may hear the words um, to help them heal in their journey, in their battle. There are plenty of resources out there, not just ours. There's thousands of resources out there. Use the resources that's good for you that fits your uh, criteria. Not always a couch, not always an equine, not always rowing, but there is something out there for you. You do not have to battle alone. Um, at abadgeofhonor.com, we make it easy that you can click on so many different resources and check them out and find out for yourself what helps you heal. And that's that's the biggest thing is it's all about the healing, it's about the networking, it's about sharing, it's about the conversation. Uh, code for couples is huge because so many of us battle within our, our own family um, and we take that stuff to work. So fixing it at home will fix it out in the street. So check out Code for Couples. Uh, City did an amazing job. Get her book. And um, if you could be anything in this world, just be kind. See you next week, everybody. A Badge of Honor podcast is produced for the OBBM Network podcast and protected under copyright law. For content permissions, please submit your request to abadgeofhonor.com on the content page. 
For OBBM Network programming information, please call 214-714-0495 today.